Hi there, Danny Myers here with Lighthouse Video Surveillance, and today we're taking a look at the brand new corner mounted vandal resistant camera from Avigilon. We're going to be taking a look at the camera installation and some video from the camera, so stick around. All right, this is the second video in this series. If you haven't seen the other video on the unboxing, uh, it's about a 12 minute video, 13 minute video that goes into detail uh, of what comes in the box and what to expect installing it and some up close footage of the camera. And so what we're doing on this video today is we're showing you uh, the camera being installed and as well as the recorded video of that camera. We'll also be adding some time codes at the bottom of this. So if you want to skip to a certain part of the video, you can, you can do that or you can replay a certain part of the video. Those links will be at the bottom of this video in the description. All right, so taking a look at the installation, uh, the housing has been installed here, bolted. There's uh, two bolts for top, two bolts for each side. And this is looking inside the camera with the grommets and uh, attaching the camera and then attaching the Cat5 cable and getting the camera uh, positioned up inside the housing and then installing the screws. They would first get started with your fingers and then you can tighten them with the screwdriver. This is a shot of the camera installed. Now he is going to be attaching the lanyard that attaches to the front cover of the camera. And as he installs the cover plate, he's going to attach the wire leads for the microphone and the infrared eliminator. And of course, tightening it down with security bit or the security screws. And that's the physical installation of the camera. One more thing that would be done to this camera would be installing silicone around the edges of the camera. Uh, this camera, I don't know if you saw the video where I did the unboxing and we talked about this is most likely gonna be used in places like jails. Jails, uh, holding cells, right, things like that. The idea of this camera is extremely ruggedized in terms of being vandal resistant. I don't know why they don't say vandal proof, I'm sure it's a legal term, but basically this camera is extremely tough. Um, it can actually, you can actually spray it down with a pressure washer, I, I believe is what is they stated. So, um, so it's very, it's very weather resistant. In jail cells, these things get vandalized, they get things thrown on them like toilet paper, wet toilet paper, things like that. And so um, you, they'd want to be able to wash them down. They could do that with a pressure washer as long as this thing is sealed up well. And uh, but the camera itself is extremely sealed, uh, sealed up really well. A couple things. Another thing, obviously, about uh, having these in a jail cell, it's important that someone can't like uh, hook something around it to hang themselves. And, and uh, um, that's it's hard, you know challenging to think about that kind of a thing, but. That's one of the, the, the important things about people in prison and jail is try to keep them from harming themselves. And so you can't tie onto this thing. You can't, there's no way it can be used in that fashion. This camera is extremely tough. Uh, if you saw the unboxing, it's like a little safe. Uh, this thing is extremely heavy duty, stainless steel. Uh, this thing, the dome itself can handle a 25, an impact from a 25 pound sledgehammer. Um, so. Uh, it's very rough, very rough and tough. And so, and this is a wide angle lens. Uh, however, it is actually still adjustable. So it's a motorized lens. Uh, it goes from, uh, uh, from a three millimeter to a nine millimeter. So it's really adjustable, but it's gonna give you that field of view, a very wide field of view in this area that you're in. Uh, the camera also has a microphone built into it, as well as infrared. Uh, the infrared that it uses is actually a, a, an invisible infrared. Uh, using that wavelength so it's not really causing a distraction. Say someone's laying there at night trying to sleep, they're not looking up and seeing this, this bright thing. Now, there is a, there is a red light on currently. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, we'll have to figure out why. Uh, I'm not sure. Showing it's recording. Okay, so it's showing it's connected and that's why it's on right now. I'm sure that you could disable that. Uh, and so we'll look at we'll look at that when we actually get into the programming of the camera, um, because the whole idea of having the the, the invisible infrared is, is that it's not going to be distracting somebody from resting. It's not going to be drawing attention to itself. As you can see, this thing looks beautiful. I mean, it's really nice looking. Um, 
So it's a very visual appealing. And um, we talked about, you know, this is gonna be for mostly indoor for jails and everything, but you notice we're outside. We're actually in a, like a little vestibule here. And I could see them being used in this type of an area as well. Say like at a school um, uh, where, you know, kids are, you know, like to mess with things. So this camera goes in the corner there. It's extremely protected by the corner itself and then the, the housing. So uh, schools and uh, detention facilities, maybe juvenile facilities. Protecting a, a camera with this type of a housing in these inner city areas where they have a lot of vandalism or, uh, you know, heck, these days, you know, there's, there's vandalism and, and rioting in areas you wouldn't even expect it in the past, but uh, having a camera like this would keep that camera safe being in that type of ruggedized corner mounted housing. So we're gonna take a look here in just, a, in just a moment at the recording from this video and show you what that looks like. So stick around. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at some of the recording from this Vigilon corner mounted camera. Um, the one that we're working with today is a three megapixel. And uh, so let's take a look at that. Now, if you're not familiar with the Vigilon platform and how simple it is to access video, live and recorded video, then uh, pay real close attention. This will uh, show you just how quick and easy it is to use this. Let's take a look. So what we're looking at right now, um, this is, uh, you notice that the camera was actually installed here at 12.15. I can see that that because I see that's when the recording started. Now, first of all, just to take a quick look here, you can have this um, set for the wide dynamic range to be on or off. If this was in a jail cell, then I would say you would just leave it off. You wouldn't have a need for it to be on. Um, but being that this is outside and it's in a covered area, it's an ideal uh, situation that you would really want to have the wide dynamic range because if you look on the image, there is a, there's quite a shadow that's being cast here. Um, so this video um, that I'm showing you right now, uh, this is with the wide dynamic range on. Notice how the shadow is not that prevalent in the image. And whenever um, this young lady walks over, we're gonna hit the play button. Watch this, we pause, uh, we can actually get a, a pretty good picture there of her um, as she looks up at the camera. And then if I were to show you the same, the same uh, lady walking in, when the Y dynamic range was turned off, you're gonna notice immediately there's a big shadow right here. And when she comes in, her face is gonna be much darker. You see, so what I'll do is I'll actually take uh, some vid a video sample here and put these images side by side so you can kind of see. Now, one of the cool things about a Vigilon is even though this is, a, this is with the wide dynamic range off, if I was to zoom in and do so, um, uh, you see if we, if we were to zoom in over here on this area, it's gonna, it's gonna look the same. But as you bring it into the shaded area, the algorithms of their software will actually adjust that view a little bit to make it better. But it's better to record with it in the wide dynamic range to begin with, if you know your lighting condition is gonna be like this. This is with the wide dynamic off, and this is with it on. So it's keeping that, that image much more consistent in its lighting, okay? Another thing for us to look at here was the actual quality. So um, we, we notice here, you can see quite a bit of detail. You know, you can see her, her, her earring, um, a substantial amount of detail that we're able to see here. Imagine that this was a was a jail cell. Notice what we're dealing with right now is we're, we're, the camera is actually positioned up at its highest point, so it can see out quite a ways. Uh, for reference, this um, area where the curb is right over here, where that curb, the lip is on that uh, platform, is 15 feet from uh, this corner, from this wall. And this concrete um, uh, slab ends at 15 feet. So that's the space. So if you were dealing with a with a um, a large jail cell, you could use this. You know, say it was a big area, you want to see 15 by 15, you could do that. But if this was a smaller jail cell, keep in mind that directly underneath the camera is a blind spot. Whenever you have the camera positioned up all the way, so I can I, I actually uh, have some video to show you of that. If you notice, um, uh, as I walk underneath the camera. As I was facing out, you know, it, and if I leaned, if I leaned my head back, you wouldn't have been able to see me at all. Okay, but uh, in this case, I'm just standing in the corner, and all you see is the top of my head. Whenever I turned around the other direction, the only thing you could see was the hood on my jacket. 
So someone could actually hide if this was all the way positioned. So if this was a large jail cell, you'd probably want to put two of these, one in each corner. Uh, and if it's that big, it's going to have multiple people in there, so you're probably going to want to have two anyway. When we look at this recording now, now that we have the uh, camera adjusted down, so if this was a regular jail cell, uh, keep in mind this line that we're looking at right there is uh, 10 feet. So this is 10 feet to this line, uh, which is about the size of a jail cell. And now there, there's no hiding. Uh, the person is seen as visible, quite visible in that. Uh, that was me turning one direction and turning the other direction. So I'm all the way in the corner and I'm very visible. And here's a view. Um, now in this case, the sun is not quite as bright. Maybe it's a little bit overcast. So, but that's the that's the visibility that we're working with. The clarity of this uh, camera is quite good. You can quite see all my wrinkles in my forehead. <laughs> you know, that this at this level of detail, you can see that my shoelaces are tied. I mean, that's that's a uh, that's great detail. Since this camera has the next generation analytics, um, I can show you a couple things that are really quite nice. If you notice, we have quite a few um, bingnesses outside and there's lighting changes quite a, quite a bit. Um, that could be adjusted to where we, we actually can adjust the sensitivity of that recording based upon the, the motion. Or we could literally have this camera set to where it doesn't record unless it sees analytics, unless it sees a person. So. Um, Notice right now, as you see uh, me walk over, there's a box around me. That is the, uh, the analytics detecting that I'm a person. So if we wanted to, we could actually pull up uh, and say, we want to find appearances of this person um, after this event. If I were to click on that, we have a couple of cameras on the system that are, that are connected to the appearance detection right now. So notice that we actually, you're catching me here. So as we star these, um, it's going to uh, keep giving us, you know, that uh, it'll keep marking it on the timeline uh, of where you saw this person, which was me. So the, it actually put this time frame, but I'm going to expand that time frame out further. Notice that I'm going to do it like this. So now it's going to provide us with more details. So I'm going to click these search results. I'm going to star them so that it will give us that. Um, It'll keep refining that search. Notice it actually pulled up someone else besides me as well. Uh, we, were, we were both wearing like the same jacket and so I would not star those because it's not that person obviously. So that just kind of shows you a little bit about um, how this camera interacts with the appearance detection. Um, I'm gonna show you real quickly as well what this, hat, what this camera can do for you in terms of the analytics. So you can pull up basically only when there was a person walking around or a person walking up to the door rather than having all of these other little recordings of, uh, of leaves flying, you know, leaves coming by and things of that nature. So we can just do a search by, uh, so if we click on the search button right here, we can search for um, motion. We're going to be searching by classified object motion and we're only going to be looking for people, not people in vehicles. I'm just going to uncheck the vehicles and just leave the people. Uh, typically, we'll lower this down to maybe around 30 or 40, the confidence level. Um, and you want to se select the time frame. In this case, I would like to actually select the whole day. I'm just going to kind of pull this, pull this bar over to capture the whole day. And we're going to hit the search button. So each one of these events that you see here, we can just click on that event. We can hit the play button. The way I like to do this is actually click the play button and then you can just tap on the next one and it'll automatically load that next one. This makes it a really quick way to review that video. Now if, if we were uh, wanting to get really uh, fancy with this, because these analytics can be programmed, um, you could actually say, you know, set this up to provide um, alerts whenever people walk in or walk up to this door at a certain time of the day. Uh, if they're coming a certain direction. So let's say that you didn't care when people left the building late, but you wanted to know if someone walked up to the building after a certain period of time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and X out of this real quickly and get into the setup. So for this camera, so if I just to right click on that camera and go to setup, let me click on analytic events, then we'll click on add an event. And Notice that it says objects in the area. That's the first uh, one that kind of the def default. We're going to go through and we're going to select 
an object crossing the beam. So right there, and then we're going to define which direction the beam is going. So we're gonna to wanna to draw it across this way. So that way it catches someone if they're walking this way and it catches if they're coming this way. So being that this is uh, um, uh, the directional button, you see the arrows are facing that direction. If we wanted to swap it the other direction or make it, I mean, both, make it both directions, uh, we click that. And if we wanted to switch directions, you click on that button right here at the top. I only want to know if they are if they're coming towards the building um, and then we would click OK and then in my rules I would actually have a rule say if this happened at a certain time of the day that is what would create the um, the event the, the alarm event I'm not gonna go into too much more detail on this but just know that you can get pretty granular with this something else I'm looking at here that would be great for this camera for example this is this is an office building okay if, um, if this area over here by the stairs, imagine with me that this people work here late, maybe there's ladies that work in this office. What if there was someone hanging out at this stairs? In this case, we would want this camera up a little bit higher, but um, if someone was hanging out of the stairs, someone could be alerted. Say a security guard could be alerted that someone is hanging out there or underneath the stairs. That'd be a loitering, uh, 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 you know, someone's there too long, say they're longer than 20 seconds or longer than a minute, um, then the, the security guards or uh, someone in the office could be notified uh, that someone is there. And then they can they can call the authorities or, or they could uh, send someone over there. So that's just one of, of many different ways that this can be used. A lot of folks think cameras are just cameras. And, and if you want to have a deterrent and stick something up there, that's great. But the cameras of today, especially with these cameras that are smart, like a Vigilance cameras and analytics, they can be used as a tool for you to prevent things from happening. It can be a valuable resource to you, allowing you to save time and money, uh, that's, whether that's going back and looking at recorded video, dealing with incidences as they pop up. Uh, I'm gonna pop back in here for just a minute, and uh, being that this is a, pretty much this is with all the Vigilant cameras, you can also set up privacy zones. And thinking of it this way, if this was a jail cell, you'd obviously need a privacy zone. Um, so we would just add this box. Let's say that the, that the latrine was was right here um, right up against this wall right here and so you just wanted to provide a, a small amount of privacy for them at that then we that box can be drawn right there and then uh, we're going to just click OK so now when we go back into the view and we look at the live video there's gonna be a box that will be covering that now keep in mind that if you set up a privacy zone like that there will not be any recorded video of that section right in that area. So uh, if this was a jail cell, you'd obviously need to be really um, precise and specific on where you want to put that box so that you're not eliminating uh, too much uh, video. Uh, this camera has this de-warping in here, but I really don't think it's necessary because the image, although it's wide, it's not, it's not really distorted in any way. So I don't really see the need for that on this. And when it comes to the, uh, the input outputs on this camera, um, notice you have the microphone that's built in. Um, you actually could add or connect in a different microphone if you wanted. Um, you know, let's say you already had a microphone in these particular areas, you could tie them in. Let's say if it was in a better location or something. Um, so you have that. You also have the speaker. Now there's not a speaker built into this, okay? But you can tie it into to another speaker, tie into a speaker that could be used if you're trying to have two-way communication on this. One thing I'm going to do as well, just to give you a quick, uh, uh, now I, I highly recommend Vigilant, obviously, uh, as they're using their VMS, their video management system. You know, the functionality and the settings is just so much easier to do right through their VMS. Um, however, let's say you're working with a different platform like uh, Genetech or Milestone or something. You can still use this camera, it'll work with that system. And if you wanted to get into the settings, let's say maybe that VMS didn't have access to these settings, uh, we could actually access those settings through uh, logging into the camera directly. All right, so we're just gonna type in the, the IP address of this camera. And we've set up just a temporary password in here. All right, so here's the, the so if you're wanting to log directly into the camera and get into the settings that way, you can do so like this. Here is the, the focus, you know, uh, actually zooming in and out, the motorized lens on there, setting the focus, it's set for autofocus. 
getting into the setup of the camera. So notice we can get in the network setup, image and display, compression. These are all those things that you saw a while ago um, with uh, through the Vigilant platform. And here's accessing them just directly on the camera. The inputs and outputs, audio. Well, I hope you found this video useful to you. That's our goal here at Lighthouse uh, with these videos. And if it was, I just encourage you, hey, can you please give us a like, a subscribe to our channel, and uh, give us a comment. Now, if there's something that we didn't show you on this camera that you wish that we would have, or you'd like to see uh, a different type of camera, um, then, then let us know in the comments. Uh, we appreciate that. It helps us to know what you're looking for in terms of content. Now, if you didn't know, we did an unboxing of this camera the other day. And uh, that video, you're going to be able to see it. It's going to come pop up on one of these sides here at the end of the video, as well as uh, another video, which is about this camera, but it'll be kind of a more condensed version. If you're in the market to purchase a camera like this, please give us a call or visit our website at uh, lighthousevs.com. Or if you're looking for someone to help you in the areas of design or consulting, we'd be happy to be a resource to you. Well, thank you so much for your interest in Lighthouse, where we seek to honor God by solving real problems with the right technology solutions. Have a blessed day.